Hello everyone, today's video is going to be about climate change and the Green New Deal. This is a very important topic, and we must take it seriously. We must act on climate change. For this video, I will not be explaining how humans' activities are the cause of climate change. Not the science behind it is what I mean. Instead, I will discuss how, how climate change relates, relates to capitalism and, and its flaws. Just before I get started, I want to remind you that all my sources are listed in the description. Climate change is a result of capitalism. Our whole entire economic system, capitalism, is based around the fossil fuel industry. The emission of greenhouse gas emissions is causing climate change, and the fossil fuel industry relies heavily on that. These very wealthy capitalists that profit off of the fossil fuel industry, they don't care if it is destroying the planet. They just don't care. They put their short-term profit over humanity. It's the profit motive. That's capitalism. They will do anything for a profit. Anything they want. They are in power. They have the power to keep that system going and keep them very wealthy. Despite all the evidence of climate change, they aren't doing anything. In a sense, Capitalism isn't even working for the top 1% because it's destroying their planet. If the planet is not ha habitable, then we will all die. This is not an exaggeration. This is common sense. We need a positive environment in order for humans to survive. Scientists, plenty of scientists, have confirmed that we have about 10 years to act before we get the irreversible effects of climate change. This is very scary. This is not something I'm making up. This is very, very scary, and this is a very, very important topic that we have to talk about way, way more. The sad thing is, these very wealthy capitalists, these very wealthy people who profit off of this, try to brainwash us into believing that we can't do anything about this, or, just in general, that climate change is not happening. They are doing that to keep themselves in power. That's why. But they are also doing it to keep capitalism in existence. This is how capitalism is maintained. Capitalism is maintained through the very, very rich owning the means of production and the economy and profiting off of it. That's capitalism for you. In the past few years, we have seen increasing evidence that climate change is happening. There are more natural disasters, and there are more people being forced to relocate. The ice is melting. Climate change disproportionately affects marginalized groups. This is due in part because these groups usually have a lower income and usually are the first ones to deal with the effects of climate change. Despite the massive amount of evidence that climate change is happening and it's harming the planet, the capitalists, or the bourgeoisie, have done nothing in reality to avert the apocalypse. Some people just say, oh, let the free market handle it. But the problem is, though, is that if the free market was going to handle the situation, it would have handled it long before it got to this type of situation, or it would be handling it right now. But instead, it's actually doing nothing and brainwashing people and trying to tell people lies that it's not actually happening. This is evidence that capitalism is failing the planet. A lot of people point to the Paris Climate Accord as the solution to this problem, and that capitalism is not why. Because some capitalist countries are members of the Paris Climate Accord. However, the Paris Climate Accord is far from being an ideal solution to the climate crisis because it only allows states to reconcile their differences on climate change. I agree, it's better than nothing, and the United States should not have withdrawn from the Paris Climate Accord, but it's not going to be able to solve the crisis. Additionally, a study by the Polish Journal of Environmental Studies concluded that increased energy taxation on CO2 on transportation only increased operational costs and did not have a reduction in, in emissions. A 2018 study by the Sociological Forum found that broad economic policies in state governments did not reduce CO2 emissions. Another co common counter-argument to this is that the United States has decreased the amount of greenhouse gases in its emissions. In 2017, the United States emitted 6.457 million metric tons, which was a reduction from emissions of 7.37 million metric tons a decade earlier. 
But again, the U.S. economy, directly or indirectly, relies heavily on the fossil fuels and other greenhouse gas emitting industries. The most up-to-date scientific studies have suggested that to avoid catastrophic damage from climate change, policies must not only limit greenhouse gas emissions, but also retire some existing infrastructure. The Green New Deal would be a comprehensive plan to deal with the climate crisis. There is no concrete, one solid definition of what constitutes the Green New Deal, but the proposal is a 10-year mobilization to act on climate change. The Green New Deal proposes the transition to a carbon-free or green infrastructure. Instead of just reducing carbon emissions, we should eliminate it, so that climate change will not continue to happen. The Green New Deal has multiple ways to reach the goal of achieving no greenhouse gas emissions to address climate change. Some of its objectives are zero greenhouse gas electricity, addressing agricultural emissions, removal of land use based CO2, investment in zero emission vehicles, retrofitting buildings to improve efficiency of energy, and incentivizing low polluting manufacturing and industry. These objectives would lead to a green economy. These objectives handle the five major sectors that account for the bulk of greenhouse gas emissions in the United States, which are transportation, electricity generation, agriculture industry, residential and commercial use of energy. A common counter-argument to having the Green New Deal is that a green economy would be very unreliable. However, this is false. A green economy can be made reliable. But also, the fossil fuel industry is actually a dying industry. The Green New Deal would actually create so many jobs as it would be a whole new industry to work in. A lot of people argue that the Green New Deal would take away so many jobs. Yes, people would lose some jobs during the Green New Deal. That is 100% correct. But the Green New Deal overall will create new jobs and there will be more people that have jobs. The Green New Deal proposal that was proposed by Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez put in the proposal to have quality access to quality water and food. It also calls for adequate and affordable housing. The Green New Deal will also address the amount of injustice that we have in this country. The biggest turnoff for a lot of people to the Green New Deal is the cost. Some estimates have been as high as $92 trillion. However, those estimates are pretty much inaccurate. The cost is significantly lower. There are numerous ways we can pay for the Green New Deal. We can obviously tax the rich, but we can also do things like defund the military and defund the police. But even if the Green New Deal does cost a lot, and it does tax the middle class so much, and people do lose jobs, I would say that it's way better than an apocalypse. In my opinion, at least, I would say that an apocalypse is a much heavier price than the Green New Deal. So looking at Joe Biden's plan, it's pretty decent. I'll, I'll give him credit. The plan looks good. But there's one thing to it, though. His proposal will not pass. Let's be realistic. It just won't pass. And I think that's why Joe Biden has that for his plan. Because I think he knows that, hey, this is not going to pass. I don't care. I'm just doing what's in the interest of capitalism. You really think his donors would, would support him if he was really in favor of a Green New Deal? In this screenshot here I took of his plan, he says he would use uh, executive orders to try to implement his plan. But, pretty recently, Joe Biden decided to say in the leaked audio that he will not use executive orders when they are seen as controversial. Or So that means that actually he will not have executive orders dealing with climate change. Because I can guarantee you at least one Republican or one Democrat, or whoever, will challenge it and say, no, there's no way he can do that. That's totally wrong. Joe Biden is basically using the climate change and the fear of the apocalypse as a way of populism. But any smart man would know that Joe Biden is not really in favor of, of the Green New Deal. Not really. Maybe he wants to do some minor things, but he still wants to keep capitalism alive. Here's a clip of Joe Biden during the debate where he discusses climate change. 
and what about fracking? All right, now, let me, now we let have me, to have, ask let me allow fracking. Vice President I Biden to respond. I never said I oppose fracking. Y you said it I, on tape. I did show the tape. Put it on your website. I'll put it on. Put it on the website. The fact of the matter is Jody he's list. flat lying. Would you flat. rule out banning fracking? I do rule out banning fracking because the answer, we need, we need other industries to transition to get to ultimately a complete zero emissions by 2025. What I will do with fracking over time is make sure that we can capture the emissions from the fracking, capture the emissions from gas. We can do that, and we can do that by investing money and doing it. But it's a transition to that. I have one more question excuse in me, this pot. And excuse then we, me. We have he was against fracking. He said it. I will show that to you tomorrow. I Good. am against fracking. Until he got the nomination, went to Pennsylvania, then he said, but you know what, Pennsylvania? He'll be against it very soon because his party is totally against fracking it. Fracking on federal land, I said. No fracking you and said or fracking. oil you on federal land. Let me ask this final question in this section. As you just saw, Biden is not in favor of a ban on fracking. This is atrocious. Biden, on that debate stage, should have said that, yeah, we need to ban fracking. We really need to ban fracking because fracking is hurting the planet. That is what he should have said. But no, instead, he just wants to pretend that banning fracking is awful. Here's the deal. It is almost universally accepted that humans are the pr primary cause of climate change and its effects. What we need to do is we need to start talking about the Green New Deal more, start pushing for it. Because, yes, there are talks about climate change. And climate change is, again, almost universally accepted. The thing is, is we are not mobilizing to fix it. We must lead the world in dealing with climate change. That is what we are supposed to do. Thank you for watching my video. Please give this video a like, share it with your friends and family, and subscribe to my YouTube channel if you have not done so.